Welcome to RFN Millimeter Wave IC Design class. This is uh, Unit 3 and this is lecture number 1 on Low Noise Amplifiers. Uh, so far, uh, you have seen the system design of Low Noise Amplifier. Uh, sorry, system design of um, system of uh, entire RF system you have seen. And uh, but the performance parameters we discussed in Unit 1. And um, to, uh, now at this point, I hope that you are familiar with the block diagram of various uh, receivers, specific, speci specifically heterodyne, homodyne, image reject receivers, and all those kind of stuff. So here we start the, the uh, here we'll start to uh, understand uh, the first gain block in the receive path that is not, uh, nothing but a low noise amplifier. So our discussion, as I mentioned, it will go up um, to five to six hours uh, to complete uh, the various topologies. We'll do a, a slightly small comparison among various topologies and one design of this low noise amplifier. All right, so uh, let me start with this. So now why do you think that low noise amplifier or, a, or an amplifier at the, mm, the, as the first gain block of a receiver is important? So uh, what are your thoughts on that? So whether LNA is an important uh, block or why uh, why we need an amplifier at the, uh, the front end? Can I get your response in the chat? Any response in the chat box? The question is, uh, why do you think that LNA, an amplifier at the front end of a receiver is important? So basically this low noise amplifier uh, amplifies, yes. So it is important that signal strength of received signal is, uh, all right, there are a lot of answers. To increase the strength of the signal to recover the degraded signal with some significant value higher than noise floor level. All right, increase um, while transmitted power of signal become less. Mm, signal strength is low, need to be low noise as it sets the noise figure of the system. Very good, yes. Signal tend to be weak after passing through the channel, yes, yeah. So all those answers are right. Uh, so uh, basically, why do we need an LNA at the front end? So if you look at both the transmit and receive path, so uh, looking at both the transmit and receive path, transmit and the receive path, uh, we can say that analog signals still exist, right? Because uh, we are receiving analog signal and as analog signal still exists, we need an amplifier. And uh, basically, we are not able to uh, replace an analog signal with a digital domain, uh, which is received by the transceiver. So see, since that analog signal still exists, and since analog signal is important, so I'll mention like this, analog signal is important. There is a need for an LNA, right? So basically, as you mentioned, uh, this amplifier is going to increase the signal strength, um, but at the same time, uh, it has to look at various other uh, parameters as well, because as some of you mentioned about the noise floor and other things, right? So if you uh, quickly look at the uh, RF section of a receiver, basically we call it as a front end. If you look at the front end, uh, we will have an antenna followed by a typically a filter uh, which is of band pass in nature and soon after that filter we'll have the first active gain, gain block what we call it as LNA or low noise amplifier right and so soon after low noise amplifier depending on the topology you will have other filters as well but the next block uh, would be other than filters the next block would be a mixer Right. So this is how uh, we represent, uh, and this is basically called as the front end of a receiver. 
we call this as RF front end. Right, and this is basic. If uh, if if it is a heterodyne receiver, this will be going to the IF section. Right. Now we are focusing onto this block, which is the um, the the first active block or the the first gain block in the receiver chain. Yeah. Uh, yes, Dinesh, yeah, it helps to reduce unwanted noise uh, as well. Yeah, we'll see how it does that. All right, so now coming to low noise amplifier, uh, we need to understand uh, the various requirements of low noise amplifier first. So uh, basically, we know that there's an amplifier which amplifies the incoming signal. And the name low noise say, uh, the suggests that, or the name, why we have given the name as low noise amplifier is, uh, the system or this amplifier will add very little noise to the system because anyway we cannot control uh, the noise of the incoming signal because uh, as it passes through the, the as it comes via the wireless environment definitely noise will be there interferences will be there uh, now um, when we design this active gain block of low noise amplifier we will consider that or we will uh, try our level best to add minimum noise to the system from this particular amplifier all right so if you look at various, this is very important what we are going to discuss now. So when you look at various requirements of a low noise amplifier, um, one thing is, so we know that there is an in incoming signal and the incoming signal is coming from the antenna. So this is the RF front end. So from this antenna, you, you are getting a signal. But we know that that signal uh, is very, very small because uh, it, would have, um, it would have come from a, um, it would have come through a channel which is having a lot of uh, related uh, problems. So the signal which is received by the antenna will be very, very small. So I would write that the signal coming in from antenna is very small. So if the incoming signal is very small, we need amplification. So that is uh, the point there, the, so the amplification is needed. Since amplification is needed, that means amplification is basically provided by, or amplification is uh, ensured by having some gain in the circuit. So this uh, typically leads to the gain requirement of the uh, circuit. That is the first thing. Uh, similarly, we also know that the received signal um, should have certain signal to noise ratio to be, uh, if you, if you want to detect the signal faithfully at the uh, receiver end, or if the, if you want to detect the signal um, with the, the total receiver system, uh, there should be a certain signal to noise ratio. The, the, the minimum signal to noise ratio conditions will be there. Uh, so there will be noise coming from the environment, noise coming from the circuit itself. So that, that will lead to a requirement of noise. So we also have to look at the noise requirement of the system. So why it is so? Because the received signal, the received signal uh, should have certain signal to noise ratio to be reliably detected. If you want to detect the signal, there should be some um, signal to noise ratio that when I say some signal to noise ratio that depends on uh, the receiver what you use the modulation technique what you uh, what you are performing uh, depending on le let me take one or two examples to say uh, to explain that so the received signal should have certain SNR to be reliably detected uh, because we know that uh, this noise uh, will come from environment and the circuit itself right so stating this i can say there is certain noise requirement for this low noise amplifier right now moving on uh, looking at the next requirement so uh, when you receive a signal at the antenna or when you when a receiver receive a signal at the antenna it is not that only signal coming at the antenna, there will be a whole bunch of signals, a whole bunch of interferers, whole bunch of signals uh, which is transmitted into this air and uh, all these things will be there at the antenna front. And, and we know that the filter cannot be so selective 
you know, to select only the desired signal. So we have to accommodate a band in the beginning, right? So as a part of receiving a band at the front end of a receiver, you may also get some certain large signals, certain blockers. So all these things will come into your receiver system. And which that means we also have to look at the large signal performance of LNA. Uh, that means if you are receiving a uh, such a um, high, high uh, amplitude signal, we also should look at the linearity requirement of the amplifier. Right. So what I'm trying to say here is uh, we know that we are uh, receiving a whole bunch of signal. That means we will have a large signal or a blocker uh, can occur. It, it is it all depends on how uh, we have there are a lot many constraints even to impose a filter to impose on a filter and to receive only the uh, desired signal. So a uh, large signal block, blocker can occur at the input of LNA. Therefore, large signal performance of LNA of LNA should be good. So when we say large signal performance of LNA should be good, we have to basically look at the linearity aspect. So that will give you certain uh, requirement on linearity. So this is your linearity requirement. Along with uh, all this, we will have certain other requirements. So that also I'll just mark it over here. So you are receiving a signal uh, from the antenna and there are various blocks coming in. So we need to uh, transfer the signal power to the next stage and that should happen uh, faithfully. So maximum signal, uh, maximum power transfer also should happen. So that leads to another requirement of matching. So we'll say that impedance should be properly matched. Impedance matching. So basically that here leads to uh, the, I can say that the input impedance and output impedance as well. And finally, all these things should happen with a reasonable power consumption. That leads to uh, power requirements. So I'll say that it is basically something what I can say as power constraints. So these are the uh, requirements of a low noise amplifier. So uh, you should you have to look at uh, the gain requirement then you have to look at the noise requirement then uh, you have to look at the linearity requirement then the matching requirement and finally all these things should happen with respect to certain power mm. is this clear are you guys with me can i get some response in the chat all right yeah thank you uh, so, uh, yeah, so let me quickly uh, talk about yeah. So before coming to the design constraints of an LNA, let me also uh, give you an example of So I was talking about the uh, that the minimum SNR requirement and other things, right? So uh, you remember, if you remember, we have discussed about sensitivity, uh, sensitivity of a, a receiver sensitivity, or right, to to be more specific, I can say it as receiver sensitivity, right? So again, that depends on the wireless standard. What we use the the frequency at which we use it. Uh, so uh, say for example, if I'm considering a five gigahertz a wireless LAN system. If I consider a five gigahertz wireless LAN, um, this will have some sensitivity, uh, and the sensitivity is basically calculated. Uh, you know, uh, it is minus one seventy four dBm 
per hertz plus the noise figure plus uh, the bandwidth we call this as the noise floor level uh, plus the snr requirements this is how you uh, you decide or this is how you decide the sensitivity of a receiver so if you look at uh, a typical 5 gigahertz wireless lan system sensitivity is calculated to be around minus uh, 81 dbm so sensitivity is basically the minimum detectable signal now that uh, minimum detectable detectable signal is calculated based on these four parameters broadly these four parameters and uh, in this um, if you look at the snr the minimum snr requirement uh, is 14 db for this particular wireless standard and for a bandwidth of uh, 20 megahertz now uh, if you ask me how this snr comes as 14 db this snr is basically derived from the the, the modulation scheme what they use and for this it is actually qpsk from this you will get the requirement of snr as 14 db bandwidth is around 20 megahertz and uh, for the sensitivity if you calculate the noise figure the noise figure is around 6 db 6 db is the total noise figure uh, of this wireless LAN system. So when you say total noise figure, this is the degradation of the signal as it, as it passes through the various blocks inside this receiver, right? So now we are talking about low noise amplifier as the, the first gain block uh, in this uh, receive path. And uh, we have to, uh, when we, uh, when we um, select a topology for this low noise amplifier, when we uh, design a low noise amplifier, uh, care should be taken uh, for what care should be taken such that the noise figure should be uh, low extremely low because there are two things one is this noise figure will be directly added to the noise figure of the system and we do have certain other components also that will uh, bring in some noise so uh, care should be taken to design this low noise amplifier with minimum noise figure as possible right so uh, even then uh, if you look at various topologies of no uh, low noise amplifier we will see that uh, the typical noise figure uh, is somewhere between 2 dB to 3 dB. 2 dB to 3 dB of noise figure will definitely come from this low noise amplifier itself. Uh, so, uh, when we, uh, so from the next class onwards, we'll see at least two to three different topologies of uh, low noise amplifier. We will analyze the noise figure of each of this block and see how uh, how noise figure contribution is coming or how uh, the noise figure is coming uh, from 2 to 3 dB uh, and um, how we can actually uh, choose a specific topology for a specific receiver. So all uh, such things we will see. So this I have taken a simple example of a 5 gigahertz wireless LAN. Similarly, if you look at uh, a millimeter wave range, for, say for example, 60 gigahertz um, where, where we talk about the gigabits per second, again, 60 gigahertz wireless LAN system also. Uh, there you have uh, that the noise figure is slightly more. You, you can have 9 dB noise figure there uh, with the same uh, same SNR and other condition because your bandwidth is more there. Your noise figure is also uh, around 9 dB. Uh, so yeah. So basically, why I'm talking about the sensitivities um, for any wireless standard from the sensitivity calculation, we'll come to know that how much can be the uh, total noise figure, and from that noise figure. Uh, some noise figure from 2 to 3 dB is directly added to that noise figure from the LNA itself. All right. I hope this also uh, made, made sense. Are there any, any, any questions now? All right. So if you have questions, please post it. I can uh, uh, respond to that. So let me quickly also look at... Um, the various design constraints of uh, LNA. Uh, so the very first thing is, as we mentioned, it should have some uh, good gain. When I say good gain, again, that depends on the topology, uh, how much gain we need for that specific um, specific uh, receiver. Now, the second requirement is our second constraint. We call this constraint itself uh, as a low noise figure. The noise figure should be low. Third one, as I mentioned, input matching typically to 50 ohm impedance. Input matching to 50 ohm. Then, as I mentioned about linearity, good linearity. That means those things we uh, find from this 1 dB compression point and IIP3. 
uh, then again output matching after input matching we have output matching uh, then we have some param parameter we call it as uh, reverse isolation so a good reverse isolation That means the signal should not travel uh, back from output to input. So that should be reverse isolation, good reverse isolation. And uh, then we also should talk about the stability of the system, stability of the amplifier. Then uh, we need to talk about the power consumption, low power consumption. And uh, as the ninth one also the op the frequency oper of operation should be high the high frequency of operation uh, because we know that <clears throat> when we uh, when we do design an rf or even either, either in millimeter way we have to operate um, an amplifier uh, in typically in gigahertz range so in our class we will start with a design example of 2.4 gigahertz and see we'll see whether we can uh, do one design for a slightly higher gigahertz value so these are some of the, uh, we can say this as performance parameters or we can also consider this as design constraint. So why I'm telling this as a design constraint is because when we try to achieve more gain, we should see that, uh, so um, you, you would have come across various topologies of amplifiers in, in analog design where we typically talk about very large gain. So basically large gain is obtained by having uh, casco transistors, many casco transistors or different circuit techniques are there. So whenever we go for any such uh, circuit technique to improve gain, uh, we are adding additional component to the system. So now the, the constraint here is when you add an additional component, say you are adding a casco transistor to improve gain, but by adding that additional component, you are add, bringing in some noise also along with that. So when you try to uh, bring good gain, you have to have a look at the noise figure. So you cannot just leave the noise figure and have a, a design a circuit with a large gain. And finally, when you uh, design it, if the noise figure is very poor, we cannot plug in this LNA to your uh, RF system itself, right? That is one thing. Another thing is uh, you have several blocks here and the, these uh, blocks are operating at high frequency, typically in, the, in gigahertz range. So uh, we have to look at the matching conditions uh, at the input as well as the output. So uh, how we can uh, typically match. So I, I'll, I'll bring you one example where I can talk about matching here. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the examples now. So um, we are in, in this specific course, we are talking about uh, circuits based on CMOS, right? So uh, in, a, in a typical CMOS amplifier, we generally uh, look for common source amplifier. So input will be given to gate and output will be taken from the drain, right? Now, uh, if I'm giving an input signal to the gate of a low noise amplifier, <clears throat> now um, I have the gate uh, input impedance of a MOSFET. Uh, typically we call it as infinity because the gate current is zero. Uh, but we also know that the, the nature of this impedance is actually capacitive, right? The, the input, uh, cap input impedance of a, cap uh, of a MOSFET, uh, basically a, a common source MOSFET, is uh, typically capacitive. Now you need to match your 50 ohm resistive impedance to this capacitive impedance. So that is a task. So we need to look for in input matching here. Are you getting the point what I'm trying to say? <clears throat> here you have an amplifier where the input impedance is uh, capacitive, but you need to uh, match it with the resistive impedance. That means we need to do some kind of, uh, we need to perform certain uh, matching techniques here in order to match it properly or for that reason we have to bring in a uh, different uh, different topologies different architectures for that similarly uh, output matching also because then there is next stage so we need to match between this stage and the next stage so um, that is another constraint so that is why I'm talking about matching here uh, and um, yeah well in in all these things Generally, in microwave design and millimeter wave design, we express all these parameters and all these in the form of um, a two-port parameter. We uh, typically use S parameters. I, I don't think you have you are familiar with S parameters. Are you familiar with S parameters in any course? We call it as scattering parameters. Are you familiar? Can I get some response? 
All right, you're not familiar. All right, so um, all right. So this is one uh, a, a two port uh, network parameter we uh, express in terms of S parameter. I'll give you a little more uh, details about this. Uh, so um, even in cadence, when we when we design in cadence, uh, we after designing this amplifier. In order to measure gain, in order to measure input impedance, reverse isolation, we usually plot this S parameter. So, uh, gain is typically denoted uh, as S21. That is the gain. Uh, similarly, uh, matching input matching is denoted using S11. Output matching we call it as S22, and this reverse isolation we call it as S12. So one and two represents the input and output port respectively. So the gain from um, input to output is usually denoted by S21, and the gain from or the the reverse path gain is usually uh, expressed as S12. S11 is the uh, the input impedance at the so it is basically uh, voltage and current measured at the uh, port one. That is S11, and voltage and current measured at uh, port two is the S22 parameter. So, um, if you have a, a good tool like Cairns, and when you design um, the amplifier by just plotting, yes, yes, Kashish, yeah, it is like Z parameter what you said in signal system. Yes, you, you would have you would have studied like Z parameters, Y parameters, A B C D parameters, all these things in your network analysis course as well, right? Yeah, so the scattering parameters, this S parameters is something what we use. Uh, yeah, this is something what we use in a microwave and millimeter wave design. Basically, in RF design, this is what we use. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So these are the uh, th these are the constraints or these are the performance parameters. Uh, typically, what we look uh, when we design a low noise amplifier. So this class is basically I'm just introducing uh, certain stuff how we go how we will go about in in our coming classes all right so quickly uh, we will yeah so out of this we will be focusing much on this gain uh, noise noise figure and input matching these three uh, things we will be um, will be focusing a little bit more we'll be trying to optimize uh, gain noise figure and input matching as well all right <clears throat> Okay, so just to introduce or just to start our, our study, uh, let me uh, start with a very simple common source stage. A simple common source stage. So this is something which we uh, which is very familiar to us a common source amplifier with a resistive load and this uh, load resistance is of value rd all right now This is the point we are feeding the input to the circuit and the output is taken from typically from drain in the case of a common source amplifier. Now this is resistive load and we will see how uh, whether we can use uh, this for as a low noise amplifier and we'll see certain details. Now uh, we have we also have to look at the capacitors here. Mm, so at the input you have a capacitor we call it as CGS. And from the same node, from the gate, you have another capacitor to the uh, output. We call it as CGD. These are the two capacitors. Now, looking, uh, not looking at the gain aspect now, we know that the gain will be GMRD of this circuit. Uh, now, if you want to match this circuit, or if you want to, um, yeah, I'm just looking at the input impedance of this. So we know that MOSFET's input impedance is capacitive. Looking directly at the input of a MOSFET, I can say that uh, this impedance is capacitive. But we know that uh, we need to uh, transform this capacitive impedance. Or for proper matching, 
we need to match it with a 50 ohm impedance, a standard 50 ohm impedance. So if that is the case, what I need to do here is I need to transform this capacitive impedance, transform the capacitive impedance uh, to resistive. Right. So basically what I want is looking at the input of uh, the transistor, the real part of the impedance should be equal to 50 ohms. Right. So how do you think, how is that possible? How can I uh, make the input impedance uh, at the gate as 50 ohm? What is your thought? Any, any response? Are you guys responding? Because I'm uh, the the other system. What I have connected is uh, to a Wi-Fi. I don't know. There is a delay. Yes. Add a termination resistor to ground. Uh, Pratap, you meant uh, at the gate itself. All right. Yes, that can be done. <clears throat> but will it will it cost if I add a uh, resistance to the circuit. Yes, we know that when you add a resistance, definitely resistance will not come for free. It will bring definitely some noise along with it, right? Yeah. So yes, one option here is, or if I want to uh, make this input impedance resistive, the only only option uh, for now, I can say. Uh, this is the circuit what we have with a MOSFET here and if I want to see the input impedance as resistive I need to definitely put a resistance here. No other option with this. So I need to add a resistance here and um, okay when I'm adding that resistance let me just complete the so this side we have a source source is uh, the signal is coming from the antenna with some impedance and I'm assuming that that impedance is now 50 ohm right so I call this as the source resistance RS and this as the uh, the signal source V, V signal right and now what I want to match what I want to do is I want to match the uh, resistance to uh, as same as that of uh, 50 ohm or as, a, as same as that of RS so let me uh, name this as say some RP and this can be done if I want to make the input impedance or resistive I need to do this right but uh, one thing is sure when I use a resistive um, yeah lambda buffer transmission line we use for matching yes we will do that so um, uh, transmission line uh, we bring transmission line elements uh, typically at little more higher frequency yeah we can do that matching we uh, we do uh, even uh, that stuff but typically that is done uh, in a little more higher frequency in um, in lower gigahertz frequency, we, uh, we uh, especially in ICs, we uh, do with these kind of, uh, with uh, the elements itself. We'll talk about that also, Prata. Yeah, now when you bring in an RP, when you, uh, or this is a very, very basic or the crude form of how I can in make a input impedance um, from, to resistive, all right. So, but one thing is sure, when you add a resistance, when you terminate this with the resistance, uh, you are also reducing the signal strength which is coming at the gate of the um, MOSFET, right? Because you, when you have RP and when you match it equal to RS, your signal strength coming here will be basically half of the signal which is available, right? That is one thing. So uh, I'll say that uh, along with that, when you add RP, when you add a signal a resistance uh, like RP, will definitely add noise will add noise. So when I say uh, this add noise to the system, we need to look at the noise figure of the circuit. So how the noise figure uh, is affected or how much is the noise figure? If it is too high, we definitely cannot use it any for any practical applications, right? Now, uh, one more thing. So if, when, you add a, when you add a resistance here as RP, we should also see that there are uh, the capacitance what I mentioned before, 
these two capacitors are there uh, typically an inductance is also added in uh, added here in order to um, cancel the effect of capacitor so those things we will see uh, probably a little later how we do such things all right but to make it complete i need to mention that so we'll come back to that uh, after some time all right so if you have any questions in between please uh, post it there so what i will do now is i'll quickly uh, look at uh, the the noise figure i'll quickly do a noise figure calculation for this specific circuit so let me uh, draw the circuit again So this is RS. Okay. So what I will do is I'll uh, I'll draw the circuit uh, by including all the no, uh, noise sources. Uh, so this is RD. Now I have at the input side I have RS and RP. Uh, so what I will do is if I mm, if I write the noise if I want to write the uh, the noise contribution from RS and RP I'll just short this input signal source. Then your RS and RP are in parallel. So I'll represent this as a single resistance RS parallel to RP uh, with uh, the noise source of 4KT RS parallel RP. I hope it is clear. So noise contribution I will uh, write using a different color. So the noise, con okay, I'll write the noise contribution of uh, all the elements. So this no the noise contribution of this is 4KT into rs parallel to rp now you have an output resistance of rd uh, that will have a noise contribution which is equal to 4kt into rd similarly you have a transistor m1 and this transistor uh, will have transistors noise as of now i'm considering only the thermal noise so transistors noise can be modeled like this and whose value is 4kt gamma into gm Right, so uh, how can I express noise? So noise is typically expressed uh, in terms of Vn out square bar. Just recollect what we have done uh, in the first unit. Mm, so uh, when I, uh, what I'm going to do now is I have three components here, which, which, um, which will, there is a contribution towards noise. One is the resistance RS parallel RP, another one is resistance RD, another one is uh, 4KT gamma GM, which is the transistor's noise. Then now the transistor's noise and the resistor noise of RD is at the output, but RS parallel to RP on the, is on the input side. Uh, so I, if I'm going to write the um, noise contribution of all these three components at the output, so the noise contribution of RS parallel RP is 4KT into RS parallel RP, which is at the input side. If I want to write the noise contribution at the output, I need to multiply this with gain square in order to match the dimensions. So I will do it as GMRD, the whole square. I hope this is clear. Now plus uh, we have the transistors noise 4KT gamma GM, which is uh, basically IN square bar. So it, to get the uh, output uh, voltage component at the output, I will multiply that 4KT gamma into GM, which is the output noise component of the uh, output noise component of the transistor. That will be multiplied by RD square because the noise is measured in IN square bar. Plus to that, I need to add the uh, the noise contribution of uh, resistance at the output, which is the voltage noise spectral density. Directly, I can add the component, and this is the V and out square. Uh, the the noise of all the components expressed at the output side. I hope this is clear. And if you remember, we also have written something called as A0. A0 is the total attenuation and the gain from the input to the output. So the gain component there is minus GM into RD and the attenuation component is uh, RP divided by RS plus RP. I hope that is clear from here, RP divided by RS plus RP, which is the attenuation, signal attenuation at the input side. Now with this, you can uh, write the noise figure. So the what attempt I'm going to do now is I'm not going to exactly calculate the noise figure, but at least I'm looking at the range because uh, what, I, what we mentioned is we are typically looking for a noise figure between two, 2 dB and 3 dB. 
now if we know if we are getting that we are getting something more than 3 db which cannot be controlled we will we, we cannot use the amplifier arch architecture itself all right so can you uh, guys easily calculate and let me know how much will be the noise contribution or the noise figure of this so how will you uh, do this by using the expression Vn out square bar divided by um, A naught square into 4kt Rs. So the noise figure can be written as 4kt Rs parallel to Rp into Gm Rd the whole square divided by a naught square into 4 kt rs plus 4 kt gamma gm into rd square divided by a naught square into 4 kt rs plus 4 kt rd divided by a naught square into 4 kt rs Are you guys with me? Can I get some response in the chat? All right, yeah. So we have only uh, two to three minutes to mind up. So I'll just uh, conclude this. So if you, you can do the calculation. If you do the calculation from the first term, you will get, uh, I'm just expanding what is RS parallel to RP. And after doing this calculation, I think you will get it as rs plus rp divided by rp plus you will have the second term gamma rs divided by gm into rs parallel rp the whole square plus you'll have one more term where it is rs divided by gm square into rs parallel rp the whole square into rd right so what we are going to do is the noise figure calculation uh, so if rs and rp are of the same value uh, this the, the first term itself will give you a factor of two plus you'll have some contribution from the second term and some contribution from the third term so what I'm trying to say or do here is or to conclude is when you have a noise figure uh, of two plus some quantity definitely that will be um, what is 10 log of two what is the value of 10 log of two Any response? Yeah, it is 3.010. That means it is definitely uh, more than 3 dB, right? So from this factor itself, you are getting 3 dB plus uh, the second and third term is not zero. You have some components over there. So uh, that means your noise figure contribution will be definitely more than 3 dB or uh, so this will be greater than 3 dB. And for that reason, uh, we will not use this topology or if I quickly uh, conclude this you can uh, say that the here the noise contribution is coming from uh, basically from the resistor or the resistive component here so you have a load resistance rd so if you want to design a low noise amplifier typically we will not use a resistive load uh, circuit so the common source of the resistive load is not a um, good uh, choice for a low noise amplifier again you have uh, the resistors at the input set that is also bringing a lot of noise to the pictures right so um, what what i'll conclude here is uh, here this lna must provide a 50 ohm input impedance right i need a 50 ohm input impedance for that i added an rp resistance in parallel but that is not the way or i should get this 50 ohm input impedance without adding a physical without adding a physical 50 ohm resistance or any other resistance value right what is the reason if i do this definitely this will add noise to the system if noise is added noise figure will be more if noise figure is more it will definitely affect the sensitivity and uh, the finally what we are giving to a system will be of no use right so uh, the, the concluding point here is 
uh, one is we will not use uh, resistive load or common source with resistive resistive load amplifier circuits for um, for amplifier for low noise amplifier because it will directly add noise to the system. Second is we are looking for some topology or we are looking for some technique where I can uh, make the input input of a, a input impedance of an amplifier resistive but without adding physical resistors to the system. That means if there is no physical resistor. The only option is we have to uh, look at um, active devices. We'll see how we can do that. All right. So with this, I'm concluding uh, today's lecture. But if you have any questions on this, you may ask it now. Thank you so much for joining today.